What's up guys, it's Justin here with another video. Today we're going to go through how I painted this Zaku head. Um, the first step, uh, I, I just want to let you guys know this entire process is a hand painted process. Uh, everything from primer to top coat. Um, we're going to start by um, tearing up some sponge and we are going to take some, uh, I think it was dark warm brown or warm brown from Monument Hobbies. It doesn't matter, just any dark brown color will do. You want it something on the warmer end. Uh, and we are going to put some of that down on a dry palette. Uh, we're not using wet palettes for any of this. And we are going to stipple it across the entire surface uh, of this model. And here's just a tiny bit more of that footage just in case. Uh, I really want to show off the technique here. The idea between uh, doing hand brushing for all of this is, uh, especially in these early steps, we really want to start building up a lot of texture across the model. Um, so whatever we're doing here is not thinned paint straight over uh, that black primer it is stippled on pretty heavily um, and it is so we get texture and we get some color out of it so keep that in mind as you kind of press forward all right guys so once we get past the uh, the dark brown phase we're going to go ahead and jump right into burnt orange and we're going to apply this in largely the same way we're going to hit fewer areas with this we're going to leave a little bit of that of that uh, dark brown that warm brown in some of the recesses and around edges and stuff like that. This is going to kind of simulate a little bit of that, um, almost like a pre-shade, if you will. Um, you want to try and stick this on uh, the middles of flat panels, on the high points of areas, uh, anywhere. I mean, really, it, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason to this. You want um, to be kind of random. This is going to create the basis of your rest of rust effects uh, across the rest of the model. So put this in random places, uh, but my general rule of thumb is when I first start applying it, I, I avoid edges, like sharp corners and stuff like that. Um, I avoid um, detail, stuff like that, so like those little uh, circular details on the top or panel lines and stuff like that. I try and kind of navigate around those and then I will uh, kind of block things in further as needed. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump over to metallics. Uh, I'm gonna use lead belcher here. You can use any uh, metal you wanna use. I recommend following the same kind of uh, strategy though, moving from dark to light. So if you're gonna use a dark, or if you're planning on getting to a, a bright metallic, just to give you a little variety, start with a dark one, work your way up, or you can use a light one. And as you'll see, we're gonna wash things down. I pretty much only use like one or two metallics on this whole model, but we're gonna stipple again. We're gonna we're gonna avoid those edges. Um, the idea here is I want to look like the uh, the edges and stuff are worn a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> now we'll go back and refine that later because you know if you know anything about how metal works and if metal scrapes against metal, there's not gonna be any rust on it. But again, we'll we'll get to that later. Um, we just want to create that metal surface and the rust undertones that we put underneath this is just going to help add a lot of variety to what we have going on between texture and color and other things like that. But it is going to look like a metal surface that has rust and things building up on it. So uh, keep working this across anything that you want to be metal, uh, even colors that aren't going to be silver. And then just to add a little bit of variety into what we're doing, we're going to go ahead and throw a little bit of, um, what is this, room more brass? Uh, just a just a like a metallic color. It could be gold. It could be copper. Uh, anything like that. Just this is where you're gonna want to put your first layer of variety in your uh, metals as far as tones go. Um, so we've done a cool metallic or so silver. Now we're gonna jump in there like that gold spectrum, and we're just gonna pick out the details that we want to be those colors. Uh, you don't have to be super like you don't have to stipple this. Uh, you can use a small brush to stipple it like I'm doing here or you can just paint it on and some of your effects later on will kind of uh, get you that effect. But you know, as you can see, just uh, don't, I wouldn't base coat the entire piece, just kind of be a little loose with it. Leave some gaps of that silver um, or whatever colors underneath and you'll we'll address all that later. So. All right, so here's where the magic starts happening. We're gonna take a, a black brown wash or you know whatever color you wanna use, I recommend um, for this, the biggest thing we're getting out of it is going to be lining and overall darkening, so go ahead and use a black wash for this. I'm just going to slop it over all of the metallic pieces. I don't think uh, we're going to touch too much on the uh, 
uh, other pieces quite yet, just because they haven't really had anything done to them. Uh, but the idea here is we want to get lining out of it, and we want to just kind of darken things down a little bit, tie all of our colors and our tones together, and then we'll do a second pass, and that's going to be like a more, it's going to have more purpose to it. Um, that's going to be to add variation and things like that to the surface. Uh, you don't have to use a wash just one time, you can use it multiple times to get different effects out of it, and I'm going to show you how to do that here. Alright, so we're going to come back with Lead Belcher, and um, from here what we're going to do is we're going to start picking out um, any of the details that we want to be a brighter silver. So, again, we can stipple this on, kind of like I'm doing here. Uh, we want to cover a solid chunk of, of what we've done on those panels. Um, again, this is not going to be the final color. We're going to wash this down some more. But the idea is we want to create variation early on so that as we wash things down and go back and forth, that's what a lot of this is, a lot of back and forth. Um, we're creating variation as we go. So um, I'm going to just stipple this on with a small brush. You can use a large brush. Just work in a way that's comfortable to you. Uh, I think there's a big dark spot on that panel. I just kind of completely avoid that. If there's any uh, areas that look interesting to you or that you want to keep uh, that other color, leave them alone. You don't have to cover the entire piece. Uh, in fact, that's kind of the reason that we did a lot of what we've done up to this point is it's going to give us a lot of randomness to work around. Um, so just carry on across all the metal pieces. We're, we're kind of going to work um, a little opposite to what I would normally do. Uh, typically I'll save my metallic colors for last. Uh, we're going to go ahead and knock most of that stuff out first. There's still going to be effects later on that we do, but we're going to get them about 80% the way there before we stop. Alright, so I'm going to jump into my brightest silver here. Um, this is not my favorite paint. Please don't think that you have to use this paint. Uh, it it kind of fights me a little bit. You have to shake the crap out of it, and you have to like it kind of separates really quickly. So just find a nice bright silver that works well for you. Um, and then we're going to use that to, again, we're going to pop out some different... Uh, tones. So here I'm picking out the top pieces of this, like uh, the neck piece, the collar joint, or whatever you want to call it, and just other small pieces like that. We're we're kind of stippling it the same way. We don't want complete opacity. We want to grab those edges. We want to um, make sure that we leave any of the dark spots or the brown spots that we want. Uh, avoid the recesses yet again. Uh, it looks weird right now, but I promise, I promise, I promise. Once we get a little farther down the road. Uh, it will look a lot better. So um, keep pushing this. Like I said, we're we're looking to create variety here, and this is the best way to do it. Okay, so now to get to the the main piece. Uh, so we're gonna leave the metals alone for right now. We are going to start focusing on the armor color. So I'm painting this a, uh, a deep desaturated blue, um, not quite a black. Now this is something similar to how I would paint things if I were going to paint black, just because I want to have an interesting colored black, um, but this works really well for getting like a dark navy as well. So we're going to use that sponge, we're going to use a pretty big piece because we're covering a lot of large pieces right now, and we are going to just work our way across the entire surface of uh, the armor. We're going to follow the same rules as before, we're going to try and avoid those dark spots, we're going to leave some of those orange spots poking through. We're not going for complete opacity here. Um, we're going to let it dry, and if we see areas that we want to touch up, we can come back later. We don't have to do everything in one pass. Uh, you got the, the, the big thing with what I'm doing here is you want to be as patient as possible. Um, you know, if, if I wanted to blast through this, I would have airbrushed it. I wanted it to have a personal touch. I wanted it to look a certain way. Uh, so you really need to take your time and just you know, stipple those panels. Don't worry about trying to finish what you're doing. Just take your time, enjoy the process. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump to our next color. Uh, we're gonna jump into dark blue. Um, it's just a little bit brighter than Payne's Gray. It's, it's a little more saturated in the blue area. This is what's gonna kind of help us push uh, that navy blue color. This is going to essentially be our mid-tone. Um, this is what we want uh, I guess the highest point of saturation to be, and we want to pull desat or desaturate the color from here to create weathering effects. Um, so the first color was kind of like where dirt and grime and things have accumulated in the deeper recesses on the bottoms of panels, things that uh, wouldn't see regular wear. Um, and then 
this is going to be that mid-tone and then on top of that we're going to put some desaturated highlights where uh, things have faded through the sun uh, through regular wear and tear and usage where maybe someone's walked across uh, the panels or anything like that uh, maybe this is something that was abandoned and like wildlife has walked across it or something like that uh, you don't really necessarily need to think about all the nuances but you do kind of want that that three layer at the very minimum um, to create your uh, again your highlights your shadows your midtones and all that stuff okay and then here's a real quick uh, assembly test for you just to kind of let you see what things look like at this point uh, before we jump into that uh, I think it's dark gray blue um, but we're gonna go ahead and take everything apart start working on it again um, now this is going to be probably your most sparing uh, step you don't want to cover the entire model in this you probably would want to do somewhere around like 10% of the surface or less and mostly your upward facing angles uh, high high points on like the sides stuff like that um, I, like I said before this is going to be like sun spotting and where the paint's starting to chip uh, where things have become a little sun faded and it's not going to be completely blended later but it will be blended a little bit so you don't really want this to to be like it doesn't need to be the smoothest is what I'm trying to get at here you do want to create those random areas and um, again by staying in these three colors you kind of have a little bit of a, a harmony going um, now if you were gonna paint this like I don't know like a red uh, you could very easily start from uh, I don't think I would do like a purple but just a deep like mix purple into red like a little bit or a dark brown into red and then do a regular red and then I would just take the tiniest bit of white or maybe even yellow and mix in for example um, just to kind of create the, those three colors I think white would probably this is the one instance where adding just straight white would, would work really well but you could also use yellow um, you know, just play around with your colors, get a scrap piece, poke around and see what, what comes out and what you like. Um, I'm just, I, I know these colors pretty well. Um, so this is just the, the formula I'm using. But like I said, experiment, figure out what works for you. Uh, work up your, your base colors the way you want to use them. Um, and yeah, you should get a pretty solid effect pretty easily using this. From here, we've pretty much got a lot of our base tones and stuff established. We're going to move into my favorite part uh, of the process, and that's going to be decals. Um, so I'm using a trick here that I learned from uh, Good Guy Dan. Uh, I've got a plate in front of me with a very wet napkin on it, uh, and I've just put all my decals on that. And uh, I'm just going to, you know, one by one, I'll pick them up. I'll drop some Mark Setter down. Uh, that might be micro uh, set as an alternative um, we're gonna pick that decal up and then I'm kinda I'm kinda particular with my decals I've seen some people will like they'll just pick the decal up by itself and like slap it on there I'm, I'm not that brave if you are that's fine uh, but I'll reposition it with the back of my knife and then once I get it where I want it I'll put those decals back on the, the water and then I'll grab like a q-tip and just kinda smooth things out uh, from there we will apply a little bit of Mark Softer over the top, and uh, you know we'll move on to the next decal. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward process. If you don't know how to do this, I, I think I have a couple videos on my channel on how I apply decals. Um, now, you don't really need this softer unless uh, you're working under extreme angles uh, or your decal is like really large and it's not sitting the way you need it to. You can totally skip softer if you don't want to use it, but uh, I don't think I actually use it. Okay, so once we get a, a feel for how the decals are, I do like another dry fit assembly just to make sure um, I like the decals I have and I, I think I have enough of them. Um, I think I did pretty good. I don't think I add any more later. I, I think I, I just kind of land where I am uh, and that's, that's fine with me. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the only pot of uh, Vallejo mecha paints that I have that hasn't dried up uh, strangely enough and that's their uh, rust texture paint I throw that in a, in a pot and I just kind of slap it around and I'll use a damp brush to feather it out just a little bit 
Um, I apply this kind of thick in a couple spots just because I really want texture, more texture than I already have. You can do this prior to this step if you want to, or you can do it, you know, later on in the game. It just depends on where your confidence level is at. You know, if you if you're more comfortable doing it earlier on, so you can see what you can paint around, that's fine. Uh, I'm also kind of using this as a first layer of dirt and grime, so I'm putting this in like really, really hard recesses. Um, so, like as you can see, I'm I'm grabbing those those downward facing. Uh, detail points I'm putting on the flat surface of this uh, that's going to create some texture there but it's also going to change the color a little bit uh, and again we're, like I said before uh, this is one of those you're going to do a lot of back and forth in some of these spots so don't be afraid to experiment it's just paint you can always repaint it you can always uh, knock things back a little bit uh, you can paint over them uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of painting over here in the future but I'm just trying to be random. I'm trying to leave it in, in deep recesses, so where two panels meet and there's that hard, like 90 degree angle, or like a, you know, anything over like a 45, um, anything with a, with a hard flat surface. Uh, and then there you go. You see, I'm I'm just kind of uh, putting it on the bottom of that panel, like it ran down, it hit the end of that panel, and that's just the way it dried uh, over many, many, many years or so. Um, and then. If, if you if you have a hard time holding the piece or you want to let it dry a little bit you can always jump to another piece come back to what you've got it'll dry by then usually and you can kind of get a better feel for how it's going to look um, wet paint always looks different than dry paint uh, not just in its finish but sometimes its color will change a little bit too so that's another thing to consider so we're going to jump into our first wash here we're going to use uh, Reichland flesh shade here uh, the purpose of this wash is going to be uh, kind of a basis for rust effects. Um, so I shook it up. I'm going to take a bunch of paint out of uh, the pot itself and I'm going to put it kind of into the lid. Uh, it gives me like a little small reservoir to pull from. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of stipple it in areas where I think there could be a little more interest. I'm going to drag it across the bottoms of those hard edge panels like we've done before with the, uh, the textured paint. Uh, we're just going to kind of put it random places. There's, there doesn't have to be a ton of rhyme or reason to this. Just think about where you'd like to put some rust or where you'd like to start putting rust. Uh, you can put it over brown panels that stick through. You can put it over uh, your metallic colored panels to uh, give them a little more variety. Just mess around with it and uh, find what you like. All right, so now we're going to grab Serif from Sepia. This is another um, kind of rust effect type wash for me. Um, this one's a little bit more of a yellowy, orangey brown. Uh, it's very light. Uh, you, normally I use this for like parchment and stuff. But this is a much better like... Um, I would use this for like fuel stains or, or light grime and stuff. It's a really good way to feather out some of the effects you've already put down. So you can kind of drop it in the middle and then sort of blend it out. Uh, I also like to put this over my decals. This creates a lot of discoloration in decals, so it looks like uh, that paint, anything that you haven't chipped over, uh, will sort of look like it's yellowed out a little bit. Uh, that's really the, the best case for this. And you can see, I, I once I kind of come to the realization that I need to weather out my decals, I'm kind of focusing on the decals, and then I'll put it around the rest of the model. So here we're going to take a, a little pot uh, this one's a pretty dirty one. I should probably clean this out at some point. Uh, we're going to put a bunch of water in there. We're going to put just like a drop, just a single drop of orange paint. Um, and this is going to be kind of our last big, deep rust effect. Oh, there we go. Put another drop in there. I thought that might have been too thin. Um, and this we're going we're gonna to trace any edges and stuff that we think are going to have rust. Well, I'm going to mix a little burnt orange in there too, just so it's not too, too bright. I think we go about a 50-50 with this. The ratio doesn't matter. You just want to find a color you like. Uh, you could absolutely do this with just burnt orange if you want. Um, but I, I like a little bit of a mix. So we're going to go ahead and mix that up with a brush. And the, again, we're going for like a wash consistency. If you want to use a medium for this, go ahead. Uh, water's just fine. And we want it to be pretty transparent. That's, that's the goal here. So we're going to grab our piece that we want those rust effects on, and we're going to start just stippling that on. Now what that's going to do is when it dries, it's going to dry kind of irregularly. It's going to look 
really weird when you drive when it dries, but I promise it's going to look fine in the long run. Um, and then you can also drag that across panels and stuff like that, and that'll leave just a little bit of that down in the bottom. You might have to do one or two layers of this just because of the, the transparency of the color. Um, but, you know, again, that's going to go a long way in giving you variety if you, like, if you trace along an entire panel line the first time and then do, like, a jagged highlight the second time. It's going to kind of play with the opacity a little bit, and that's going to look really nice for you. Uh, but, again, be random. Think about where you want your rust to settle. Think about where, where rust would settle. And uh, just carry on through. All right, here we go. We're going to do uh, another layer of that. This is going to be just orange this time. We're not going to mix anything into it. It's just going to be a really bright orange wash. This is going to be representative of the freshest layer of rust uh, on the surface. So be pretty sparing with this unless you want something to look like it's really, really, really taking a beating. Uh, we're going to follow the same rules as last time. A, a big portion of where we apply this is going to be over surfaces we've already put orange down on. Um, you can do a little bit of streaking with this. I don't think I'd go too crazy, especially with the size brush I'm using. Uh, but you're going to use a brush that, that feels good to you. Don't don't worry about using the same brushes or the same colors I'm using. Find stuff that works for you that will serve the same purpose. Um, I'm, I'm dotting this over a few surfaces, but I'm really trying to focus this inside of panels and stuff like that. This is, uh, again, it's going to be like, pretend it just rained, and it's just kind of woken up some of that rust that's already on the surface. It's starting to generate new rust. It's pulling rust in new areas. Where would that settle? Um, that's kind of my, my mindset for this. Uh, I also want to take a second to apologize for the focus. This is my first uh, actual video using my GoPro, uh, so I don't really understand how the focus settings work. Uh, I try to dial it in hit record and then it would kind of do its own thing so you can still kind of see what I'm doing here just because of the color contrast but um, that's what I was going for so the next step here is we're gonna go ahead and take that base coat metallic that we used uh, to base coat everything uh, if you want to use a different metal that's fine uh, I would stay in the silver range here and we're just gonna um, kind of drag this across some of the flatter panels of the armor and this is going to simulate the effect of um, rust hasn't set in quite yet, or maybe it has. Um, and there's just that something keeps rubbing against those hard edges and exposing that bare metal. Um, or again, maybe it's a spot that hasn't received any kind of rust or anything like that. And it's just the paint chipping away, the primer chipping away, and all you've got left is that, that bare metal. Um, it's going to give you a lot of contrast, it's going to build some of the shapes, and it's going to really frame a lot of what you're doing and let you see what shapes are on the surface of this model, as well as providing, uh, again, a flat color contrast and a metallic color contrast. You're going to have something that's, I don't want to say glossy, but you know something shiny for you to, to pay attention to. Um, don't do every single edge in this. Uh, be sparing, pick, pick out the ones that are important, pick out the ones that are near weather and stuff like that, and then go from there. Uh, if, if you don't like it, you can always paint back over it, throw a wash over top, it'll dull that metal down. Uh, and if you always want to do more, you can just dip your brush back in some paint and keep going. And then we're going to do a big chunk of the same using um, our, our brighter silver again. We're just going to put those deep within what we've already done. We're going to focus around some of the metal areas. We're going to create a little bit more contrast in more spots. It's pretty simple. All right, so this is going to be kind of the secret sauce here. We're going to um, take this Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss. Um, again, you can use any wash that you like. Mix a little bit of gloss medium into it, uh, or if it's already glossy, just let it be. Um, and we're going to kind of create, I don't want to say rain effects, but like oil streaks and stuff like that. We're going to grab rust out of panels, we're going to drag it down, and we're going to do this a couple times, and when this dries it should provide a nice layer of contrast uh, over the, the kind of semi-gloss surface that we have here. The It's not f it's not matte, but it's not glossy either. Like You can see the way the light bounces off of it. It's not completely matte. It's like a satin maybe. Um, but this will give you a nice glossy surface to contrast that. And when the light hits it the right way, it'll look really good. 
And there we have it. Uh, this is uh, kind of just a quick look at what the parts look like. Um, a couple shots of, you know, the parts before I fully assemble them. I didn't show you how I painted the eyes. It's not really that difficult. Uh, you just pick a color you like uh, and then start adding white to it and then find a clear version of that color and just kind of blast over the top and it'll give you that effect of, um, you know, everything looking really nice and, and good. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully uh, you give it a shot. If you do, please uh, tag me in your posts. If you post them on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, uh, I'd love to see uh, your projects in this in this style in this take um, it's a lot of fun it's a really personal way to paint a model um, hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching guys and then just a reminder if uh, you want to help out the channel there's links and stuff in the bio or down in the video description to help out uh, but what helps the most is a comment a like share it with a friend uh, let anybody know follow me on my other socials and uh, thank you guys for your time if you made it this far later